So I feel like some of y'all probably feel the same way I do. The end is coming to the garden. And to me, it's really not the end. The leaves are falling. And the garden's a mess, of course. But it's that time to get it cleaned up, pull things up that are done, and start over. You can grow enough for you to eat for the winter time, and it doesn't take a lot of space or a lot of money. I'm going to show you just a few things that I do. Um, Danny and I are pretty, <laughs> we're getting on up in age and we're pretty tight with our money. So when we think we can do something and do it differently and save money, that's usually the way we go. Now, sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and do it. Um, but there are ways to feed yourself in the winter time. When I come out to the garden, it's not just a place where I grow plants to nourish my my body and my soul. We're gonna get this right. What is this elephant garden? No, that's the California where? Yes. We he planted you're getting me all mixed up here, old man. Um, he done planted the California soft neck. We ordered it from Country Creek from St. Peter's, Missouri. And uh, we planted this kind the year before last, and it done great, didn't it? Yeah. We had we had a good, I think it was the hard neck we planted last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it didn't do as good. No, but it's still good garlic. Oh, yeah, we it's very good. It's very good garlic. And um, then Douglas from Portland, Oregon. I've done got some of them in the ground, but he sent us some elephant garlic. I want you to look how big them clothes are. Pick one up in your hand. That's, there's, that's huge, ain't That's it? huge. <laughs> now to eat it. So. Just eat that like that right there. Just eat it like an apple. We're going to plant them too. So anyway, about four inches deep. I put them about six inches apart. I actually put these a little more. You can kind of see the holes I've done covered. I haven't covered them up because I'm going to water them. It's real dry. We've had real dry weather. And the hurricane that hit down there in Louisiana. Uh, and people were having a hard way to go down there. But we didn't get very much rain. At first we were supposed to get two or three inches. And we didn't. We got just a, a trace. It barely settled to dust. And look right down here, as I was tearing up my bed, I got some garlic up. I got four little garlic that are from last year's cloves. They decided to come up. <laughs> they were scared. They wouldn't come up. They wouldn't before come they... up. Now they decided to come up, so I dug them up and planted them over here on the side. I got to get them watered good. But there'll be... Uh, there's about 30, there's around 40 cloves of soft neck. And if they make six a piece, that's 240 cloves. And whatever this, we got about 14 of these elephant garlic. Well, that'd be plenty because I'm telling you right now, I've got so much garlic hanging in there right now. <laughs> I don't know where ever So, gets... you know, we don't necessarily use a clove every day, every day anyway. So 365 days in a year. We eat a lot of garlic, but we we manage, we keep it going. And that's something you always need to try to remember. You're not guaranteed a crop. I don't care how good a gardener you are. There's times that your crop's going to fail. And so you always need to try to keep it going and do the best you can. And, and we've got garlic, you know, from last year. Lots of it, and uh, and it would do us probably most of, um, or a lot of next year, maybe not all of it, but anyway. There's just, just because you put it in the ground don't mean it's going to do like you want it to do. And uh, 
In the same way of saving seed, there's no guarantee that you can keep seed for years and years and years and then guarantee that it be good. So you need to replenish your seed supply because you never know. You may plant that seed and it may not come up or it may not make a crop. So we're always trying to be just a little bit ahead of the game. Takes a lot more work and effort, but that's what we try to do here on the homestead. So I'm gonna put some of this elephant garlic in the ground. What you wanna remember is the pointed end goes up. This is your root end right here. The pointy end goes up. I'm putting these also about four inches roughly. Put them in there just like that right there and cover them up. To me, it's a time for me to come out here and sit and reflect on maybe what I'm going to do different next spring. Because no matter how many years that Danny and I have homesteading and, and garden, we do something different every year. Because you learn something new all the time, no matter how old you are or how long you've been doing it, you always learn something different. It may be from somebody else you've learned it or just by your own um, doing of, you know, doing something different and thinking, hey, that works better. Or I like that way just a little bit better. Coming out and, and just being in the garden it seems to bring so much peace, not just to me, but to a lot of people. And I believe that's the way God intended it. He wants us to be good stewards of the land. He wants us to provide for ourselves. So we always need to make sure that we pass our skills on to the next generation so that they have these skills to prepare and to be able to feed their self. But what I'm trying to get at is, you know, just for instance, Nanny and I work, and we come in from our jobs. And for me, coming out here, Just working in the garden, getting my hands dirty, breaking my nails because I have no nails left. <laughs> my hands look rough and wore out. But just coming out here and sitting, it brings me so much peace. I think I'm really close to the earth and the earth belongs to God. We're just here for a little while. We need to take care of it and to use it the way he wants us to use it. But I don't know how anybody can go out in a garden and, and I know because I'm guilty but in August, when it's 110 degrees outside and you're trying to save your crops and everything out there and you're out watering and you think, oh my goodness. But then when it comes fall and you work so hard in the garden, planting, pulling, digging, watering, babying, fertilizing, um, fighting the, the bugs and the caterpillars and the white flies and <laughs> the tomato worms. Oh my goodness, sometimes you just want to throw your hands up. But then falls here. And you think, well, I got most of everything canned or put up in the freezer or something. So you just kind of reflect on that and, uh, it's just all better. 
You, you feel good about what you've done. And I think that the happiest person is the person that goes to bed with just a little bit of dirt still under their nails. <laughs> That's what I believe. You don't have to have a huge garden. You don't have to have expensive anything in that garden to make it yours, to make it a peaceful place to grow you some food. It just does, you just don't. So I encourage people, you know, sometimes it can get so disheartening because it's so much work, but then when you feel, it's kind of have, like having a baby. You think, oh my goodness, I'll never do this again. But then once it's all over, you do it a hundred times again. But if gardening is not your thing, of working in the soil and growing your own food, plant one big enough just to give you some peace of mind. To cleanse your soul just a little bit. To be able to go out there and sit and look what you've done and, uh, and just feel good. You can just kind of close your eyes and take a deep breath. And it just seems like everything's better. Everything's kind of at peace. So, gardening is not something that you should dread, ever. I always look forward to it. I always look forward to new ideas and what I'm going to do different. <laughs> Danny says I'm always changing things, yeah. Uh, that's what women do. But, I love my gardens, and until I can just no longer do it. I'll always do it. And I hope that's the way, you know, it'll always be. I want to teach my grandchildren how important it is to get your hands in that dirt and to plant you a seed and watch it grow. Nurture that plant and eat that vegetable that nourishes your body because that's the way the good Lord intended it. So I encourage everybody, grow something. Even if it's just on a little back porch patio, put you some pots out there and grow you a little bit. Put your chair out there and just sit out there and watch it grow. <laughs> There's nothing me and Mr. Brown enjoy more than just to go outside on the front porch, especially on a Saturday morning. We don't have to get up early. Get us a cup of coffee. And that's what Mr. Brown does. And he'll go out there and just sit with his cup of coffee for a while and just Listen to the silence, except for all the birds and squirrels and everything, everything of nature. So anyways, we reflected a little bit on that. I'm going to show you a few more things that I'm doing for just a, a fall crop. And if y'all followed me last winter, I had uh, lettuces and greens uh, plumb up to the next spring. Uh, well, plumb up to, the, to when hot weather started because that's when everything started bolting. So it just done wonderful. We're starting out with a very dry fall. So things are not really popping up like they should yet, but uh, they're doing okay. I'm gonna show you a few things though before we get off here. This is something I've been wanting to show y'all. Now this is uh, what we call dipper gourds and lupus. And this was grown two summers ago. I didn't plant any 
the year before or this year because I had enough and I wanted to plant stuff that vegetables that we needed instead of gourds that we didn't need. But I think uh, next spring I'll probably go ahead and go ahead and plant some more dipper gourds and lupus. But these have really the last couple, and these are dirty, they need to be cleaned up, but these have cured really good. And you can hear the seeds inside. So I'll get them cleaned up. Well, that, that one's got a bunch of seeds in it. Mr. Brown took this one and he made me a dipper out of it. Spoon. Which is pretty neat. And these are my lupus. And these are really great. You see this one I've kind of cut open. And what you would do is just this one I could cut in three pieces and I could use it washing dishes. These right here that look uh, black, that's because they're full of seeds. That is full of loofah seeds. And I would send anybody that might want some loofah seeds. Um, I can't guarantee that they'll grow, but you, you know, if you can't find any, I'd be glad to to send you some before next spring. This one right here, you can see that's what the inside looks like of a loofah. And these things are so wonderful to have on your homestead because you can use them to wash your body or wash your dishes or whatever you need to clean. They're all very porous and uh, they do a great job. Whoops. They do a great job. You can see them seeds coming out. But I've got a bunch of seeds. But I think lupus, is, it's a very good thing to grow. Now, you don't, I don't, unless you're selling them. Now, if you're selling them, you might want to grow them every year. But just here on the homestead, I think about every other year or so is, a, is good to grow lupus. They'd give you plenty to, to get through the year with. But I just wanted to show y'all some of these. And I will be growing these again. They're a good thing. This is one I wanted to show y'all before I left you. This is a big old window of an old house that Danny... Danny's seen this, I think, when he went to put maybe a new window in the bus I can't remember and they had some windows out back or something anyways he didn't give much for this big old window and I've got four of my containers underneath it and already I've got a lot coming up I've got carrots and I've got beets Here's some more beets. We love beets. And over here I've got some, what they call, and I know I'm not going to say it right, but hakuri radishes. They're white, really sweet, really good radish. So, that's one way that you can grow. Grow you some good veggies this winter. You can even just do one container, uh, find you some kind of a window, maybe you got some around the place, or sometimes you can find them at flea markets and stuff, anywhere from five to ten dollars. Some small ones that you can handle. And this one ain't real heavy, I just kind of lift it up and water and put it back on there. But he brought it home to me, so I wanted to make good use out of it. And it is, it's growing me some veggies. And it works, just like a little bitty greenhouse. So I want to show y'all here in my high tunnel. I still have some pepper plants left. And this is a, it's a, some kind of little small, sweet Italian bell pepper. And I forget the name of it, but it's still got a bunch of blooms on it. 
and I kind of cover it up if it gets too cold at night, but it's not got down the freezing yet, so we're okay. But down here I have planted a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of lettuces, Swiss chard, spinach, kale. Of course, the leaves are falling in here. I don't have uh, plastic film up over my shade tunnel, and I probably won't this winter. I'm just going to use my insulated row crop covers, what I'm using. But I do. You can't, they've not all come up. But I have a bunch of little, you might be able to see some of them trying to come up. But I've just got this thing full of spinach and, and lettuces and stuff. I even planted some celery. Hoping it'll come up. So that's what's in these beds right here. And this will keep us fed. If it does as good as it did last winter. It'll keep us fed all winter long. Now if I back up. That's the row crop cover. And uh, they're not really not that expensive. And they last several years. I've got this one uh, that I've got here that I use that does an excellent job. And I got it on Amazon. It's in my Amazon store. If you just want to look at it and see what I'm talking about as my row crop cover. We're still cleaning on the garden. When we have time. But everything's coming up good. We're still having some 80 degree weather. So I didn't get in too big of a hurry to plant my grains and stuff because if I'd have planted them a month earlier, they'd have been up and uh, the hot weather would have just, well, they just wouldn't have been as good. But we had excellent, excellent lettuces and greens last winter with the row crop cover. Got one sad little uh, butternut squash hanging on. Bless its heart. The rest of the plant has already died. It, it gave us some squash, but this little feller just kept, and it's doing good. And I'm I'm thinking that it'll go ahead and uh, it'll be ready before the first frost. I think. Of course, this is Arkansas. It could fool me. Our bell pepper plant here the back of the garden has just really took off. It didn't do much this summer. We had a really hot, dry summer. But right now, they are doing really good. And they've got a bunch of blooms on them too. So, I never give up on my plants. Never. And for some reason, like I said before, here on this hill, the pepper plants do better when fall's coming on, than they do in the middle of hot summertime. And that's just the way they do here. So we'll have some more bell peppers coming on. And the last of the tomatoes. They're starting to bust a little bit on top, but they're still pretty good. So we're out here, and the vines have the butter beans, speckled butter beans, and some people, I think, call them Christmas butter beans, but they're kind of a purple reddish speckled butter bean. And I planted them late, and I am getting quite a few. I, I got a load of blooms, but I am getting the little pods. You can see on the right and the left there, and the other blooms. And these blooms is what I've got growing everywhere, all over the plant. I'll show you. I'll back up and show you the whole plant here in a minute but from this size they're going to grow into this size 
and these pods will fill up with one or two, well, two or three. That's the most, three is the most I've gotten out of one. Beans. And you think, well, that's not very many beans. But I wanna show you how big these beans are, these better beans. And I'm sure in different places they're called different names. But here I am, they're just called a, a speckled butter bean or a Christmas bean. I think I dropped one down here. So they're pretty good size. Pretty good size beans. And I really didn't think they'd do much. I come out here late. I had green beans growing in here. And when they were done, I just come out here and planted me a bunch of these butter beans. I love butter beans. I grew up on butter beans. And uh, the plant done real well. You can see that it's just took over my little bed there. We've had very, very, very dry weather. But they've took off, and like I said, they're just loaded, loaded with blooms. And I don't figure before the first frost, I'm not sure how many butter beans I'll get. But I'm just really amazed at how big <laughs> those butter beans are. So I will be planting these again. I'll plant them early in the spring. I think they'll be a good thing to have. I've got a bunch of them in the house in the freezer waiting to be planted. But I just wanted to plant some this fall just to see how they've done. They've done really good. So that is a speckled butter bean, a Christmas bean vines right there, plants. And they have, they've kind of took over. But you can see the blooms. So, if you like butter beans, I think you should try the speckled, purple speckled butter beans.